All right, let's also go in and because we are um, accessing the object when we do mouse button down, let's add it on mouse button up. And so when the button goes up, that's going to release the object from being moved. And that's this code right here. So if we are currently moving an object when the mouse button goes up, then we're going to set the moving object to nil and then set the Boolean to false so that now we know that we are no longer moving an object and we don't have a reference to it. And of course, because we are pulling that um, another event, if you remember, we have to go back and wire this up in our main because main gets all the events. So we will create an on mouse button up and we're just going to go ahead and paste this code in right here like that. Okay, so we're just sending the event over to the aim cam AI. It's the on mouse button event. So we'll save that. We'll compile and let's jump back over to the aim cam AI. Now let's go over to the on mouse move uh, because obviously if we now have this object under our cursor and we want to be able to move it around we have to change the code for when we're actually in the mouse move event. And it is simply um, we are going to create a new if statement. So if we are moving an object then we're going to send an event to the object that we're moving into its movable AI into the on mouse move. So we're going to let the object itself handle the um, uh, moving the object around. If we're not moving an object, then we're going to do what we were doing before um, in on mouse move, and that is to you know aim the camera and do whatever else that it was doing before that. So I think we are all set with this. Um, the next thing we'll have to do is jump into the movable AI. Uh, on the object and then we're going to actually put in the code um, to move the the object uh, when we've got it under our cursor. This part's going to get uh, a little complicated but just hang in there and I'm sure we'll be able to make sense of it. So let's jump over. Let's see. We will create a new handler in the movable AI we will do on mouse move and we'll put that code right in there. All right, so like I said, it looks a little daunting because there's a lot going on here. And once again, I haven't done a great job of commenting. Um, I plan to go back and do that later, but it's probably not a good idea. You probably want to do comments as you're going. Um, I've just been a slacker as far as that's concerned, so I apologize. Um, the first thing we do is we grab a handle to the scene and then we're going to call this uh, same thing that we are familiar with from before. This is the collider. So we're doing a ray cast into the scene. When the mouse moves, we want to know um, uh, the position uh, that it's, how do I, ex how do I do, it? how do I explain this? So we're shooting a ray into the scene and we want to know in the global coordinate system, we want to know the point at which the cursor is over. And the reason why I want to know that is because uh, I want the object that we're trying to move, I want it to uh, move to the object that the mouse is pointing to or move to the location that the mouse is pointing to. So really what we're going to do is we're going to click and hold the button and we're going to drag the object. And so every time the mouse moves, I want that object to move to the location of the pointer. It'll just follow the pointer around until we release the button. So, uh, long story short, all we need to do is get really this X, Y, Z is what I'm interested in. This get first hit collider X throws in instead of just the object, the distance and the ID, it also throws in the coordinates. There's also, if you look at this, there's an IJK, which is a uh, vector that represents the normal, um, but we're not gonna worry about that. All I care about is I want the X, Y, and Z values. So I'll throw that in there. And then I'm also, the next line, I'm going to get the current location of the object. So that's where I get object.get translation this object, which is uh, what the AI is referring to. We're going to do all this in the global space. The reason why I'm getting the current location 
um, is because, as you notice down here, when I move it, I want the Y value to stay whatever it currently is. There's a possibility that when we do some ray casting that we'll hit the top of an object, and so then instead of it being down on the ground level where we want the object to be, suddenly the object's going to jump up on top of another object. It, it's just a mess. So, um, and actually this is reference to something that I was testing, so let's get rid of that because I don't think we're going to need it. So once we get the x, y, z value of where the cursor is and we get the x, y, and z value of where the object currently is, then we're going to go ahead and move the object to the x and z coordinates where the mouse is, is currently pointing to and then we're going to keep the y value the same as it was before. And that's all there is to it. The, Ida, the object should move around with our cursor. So let's hit Control S to save, F7 to run. And I believe we have everything that we need. Let's jump back over to our scene. Let's stop it in case it was doing something weird. Let's move that over. Let's reload the scene. Let's save it just in case. And let's run it. And I like to go into the, uh, the runtime mode. All right. So things work just fine. Let's switch to overhead mode. And let's see if we can click on this. Nope. Oh, you know why? I always forget to do that. So what I forgot to do was I forgot to add that AI to the object. So let's go back to this mode. F9, let's reload the level. And within the level, we're going to grab the pillar and we'll, we will assign a controller, the AI, add AI, and we want to do movable AI. So an object will not become movable unless this AI is attached. Let's save the scene. Let's move over to here. Let's hit play. Go back to texture mode. Okay, we'll bounce the ball around. Let's go to overhead mode. Wait for it to come to rest. Okay, so let's scroll down here to this object and see if we can move it around. Okay, so there we go. So we have the ability to move the object around. Right now I'm not doing any checks on the walls. I'm not sure if I'm going to or not. Um, it was I was testing some stuff with that and it was getting pretty complicated. But I can move the object to, let's say here, and then switch back over to aim mode and we can aim it and bounce it off that thing. Um, so it's pretty cool. Once you get a few objects in there, it makes things a little more interesting. In fact, let's um, let's edit the scene. Let's come in here. Let's go back to. Um, oops. Let's go back to that mode. We'll select this object. We'll hit Control D to duplicate. And let's move this over. Let's hit Control D to duplicate again. Move this up. Control D, move this up and over, and we will save our scene. Run it again, switch back over to texture mode, and we can actually jump in here and move some of the stuff around before we actually launch the ball. So move that up there. I don't know, we'll move things around a little bit. Maybe we'll put it uh, right there. And then as long as you're not clicking on an object, you can fire the ball from overhead mode. Now you notice that it came up and hit this, so let's try moving it over just a little bit. And then we'll click and fire the ball again. So, uh, you know, now it gives us the opportunity to maybe play around a little bit. And the hard part is trying to remember where the ball went so that you can get the object where you want, where, you know, the ball was going to be. That's by design though, I definitely want this to be a bit of a challenge. Anytime we want, we can switch back over to chase cam mode. So we're starting to get an idea of you know, what we can do with the game. We just have some basic objects in there now. We're going to add some um, more stuff, things that will uh, do different things to the ball rather than just reflect it and or you know, have it bounce and so it's starting to take shape. Um, thanks for tuning in for this video. Hopefully it wasn't too quick and too confusing. Um, and we're just going to keep moving forward with this. Uh, we're getting to some fun stuff. Um, 
I really wanted to get some flames and things in here on this one, but I just ran out of time. The other thing I want to be able to do is rotate the objects, not just move them around. That's going to have to come in a later video. So go check out my website at um, subspacegames.com. Um, feel free to jump into the forums, leave me feedback on the game, uh, jump in, see the game prototype, play around with it a little bit, and uh, 